from there at the Texas State Fairgrounds. Longhorns and Sooners both surrendered second-half leads and had disappointing losses last week. For Texas, it was worse. A conference loss and a home loss. They have higher expectations. For Bob Stoops, hired almost a year to the day after Mac Brown was at Texas, he's on the ground floor of this rebuilding job here. The Sooners haven't been to a bowl game in five years, only beaten Texas twice in the 90s. For Soups, the ex-Gator guru of defense, it's his first OU Texas tussle, the first for most of his staff as well. It follows his first game as a head coach in the national spotlight, and our cameras followed Soups, his staff, and his Sooners as they took important steps toward trying to revive a once-proud legacy. Our whole objective is to, is to get stronger and better, you know, as a team, as the year progresses. However, we're ranked really, you know, doesn't matter uh, to us. We, we've got to concentrate on being the very best we can and, and uh, hopefully improve and get stronger as the year goes. And, and the rest of that will take care of itself. All right, man, let's get going. We want to make sure we understand some things, uh, where we got to get better. Again, realize uh, great job being able to come from behind and win. Uh, going uh, away from home, uh, going on the road and being able to win uh, anywhere, that's, uh, that's a good job. Be careful. Everyone wants to tell you about how good you are. Got Louisville up, got ND next. We're going to play a big-time school. Notre Dame has a lot of tradition, but then Oklahoma has a lot of tradition. And this is going to be a very exciting game. We want to go up there and, um, you know, play well and show the nation that, you know, Oklahoma has returned. We're going to prepare hard and work hard and be ready to play Notre Dame. You guys ready? He's a family man, and uh, he's a disciplined man. He's very, very enthusiastic, very competitive, and uh, he's built a very good staff around him. He's a coach that hired assistant coaches to do their work, and he expects them to do their work. He, he trusts you, and trust is very important. A head coach needs to trust his assistant coaches, and uh, Bobby does. We need to see some speed and strength up front, okay. moving around at a good pace. We haven't seen that right. kind of tempo yet. Yeah, that's good. I try and sit in, and, and I do, you know, in defense and offensive meetings as much as, uh, as I'm able to, just to make sure that I'm uh, familiar and feel good about everything that we're doing. Everybody bought into their, their system right away, and I think that's the key when any new coaching staff comes into, into the university, is that the football team has to buy into that. And if the football team buys into the system, uh, you know, they're going to be successful no matter what happens. I've had so many different head coaches, so many different assistant coaches, so many ups and downs in this program since I've been here. I've had to adjust to different philosophies, different styles, and of course change is hard. No one wants to make change. But um, this year the seniors decided that we want to turn this thing around. Anytime your tight end blocks on a boot, you gotta go. I like teaching and, and coaching. Obviously, uh, everyone in my family's been been uh, you know a teacher or a coach, so it's it's very, very satisfying for me and I, and I enjoy that part of it. Keep that butt up. Slide those feet. Slide, slide, slide. Leg, go. Good. And this is a situation where, you know, Notre Dame's got such great talent uh, and physical abilities that, uh, you know, we got to do as good a job as possible as trying to find out exactly where we feel like, you know, we can attack this team at. So far this year, they've been attacked on the perimeters here. And, you know, the teams threw the ball well against them, but it's all been on the perimeter out here. Nobody's attacked the middle. The middle's wide open. They're going to run it, boot it, run it, play action. Back and forth the whole game. That's their deal. Misdirection, you know, a lot. This tells me the personnel, you know, obviously the groupings, uh, what formations the, the, the personnel groupings come out in. So, obviously, uh, you know, we have the percentages uh, run pass, uh, first and ten uh, with two backs, one tight end you know, 75% run. Uh, what we have on the board here are the various fronts that they have shown to date. That doesn't mean that uh, they can't give us a new look up front or a, a new blitz or stunt. But uh, basically what we've seen to date on film, we've set our pass protections according to what they like to do. Well, there's no doubt that, you know, this football team's in a routine as far as preparation goes throughout the week. Uh, you know, everybody goes and spends a lot of time watching film before practice, you know, in between classes. and. And then, you know, we watch as a team uh, right before practice and go out and, and execute our stuff during practice. When they take the field, they've got to have urgency. They've got to have suddenness about every single thing that they do. Are you reading, are you reading the key? Are you reading your key? First back here. First back here. Because when the bullets are really flying, when there's live ammunition out there, uh, you got to be, you know, be on top of your game.
Welcome to Notre Dame. As I was walking through the field today, I could just feel an aura of all the great players that have played there, all the great people that are associated with that whole program. And it was exciting. We're going to be ready to go. Ready to go. Tired of waiting around, right? Above all else, stay aggressive the entire day. And everything you do, go after it. Everyone understand that. We're staying aggressive the whole day, all the way through the fourth quarter. Doesn't matter what the score is, we're way ahead. We're in a tight game, doesn't matter. Stay with it for four quarters, right to the end. We'll be in great shape. For a victory is nigh. You know we came to win this game for Oklahoma. And so we will or know the reason why. Go and D. Daniels to the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 50, 10, 5, touchdown Oklahoma! Caught at the 2, touchdown Oklahoma, Trent Smith, the tight end. Fade pattern, Daniels, touchdown Oklahoma. Guy fires a pass deep in the end zone, man waiting for it, and it's touchdown Notre Dame. And off goes, driver dumps over the line of scrimmage into the end zone. Darius Jackson turns, hands the driver into the end zone for the touchdown. And that's the end of the contest, as Notre Dame hands the Sooners their first loss of the 99 season, 34-30. Bob brings a lot of things to this program, but the thing he brings the most is positive energy, a positive attitude. He sees a silver lining in everything. Tomorrow it's a new day. Get up and get ready to get after uh, Texas in the Cotton Bowl, and, you know, that'll get us going again. Well, don't get the impression there that he's happy with moral victories about blowing a 16-point lead and losing that game. The Sooners did show some signs, but Stoops was unhappy with how his team finished there. Now another big test with Texas, his first time. Yeah, another big test, and you're right about that. He, he does not want th those type of victories when he is not winning a football game. It, and that's because he's still teaching this program how to win. And he knows how to win. He's been around a lot of great coaches, from his dad to Hayden Fry to Bill Snyder to Steve Spurrier. None have been more influential than his time that he spent with Steve Spurrier. He's organized his competitive spirit. Somehow, though, he has a way of keeping things loose, and the players really respond to that. And I think that will be the difference today. I think Oklahoma will upset Texas because of the ability to throw the ball with Josh Heupel and look out for Brandon Daniels. I think he'll have a big day. I think Oklahoma beats Texas. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. Not so oh, fast. Oh, hook them oh, horns. Hook them oh, horns. Yeah. Because last week, Notre Dame exposed a problem with the Oklahoma defense. They ran the ball right at them. They ran for 284 yards, average five yards per carry. So watch Hodges Mitchell, the Texas running back, to have a big ball game. Hodges has averaged seven yards per carry in the last three games. I think that'll be the secret. He's a tough runner. I expect him to break a long one right there against Oklahoma. Now, Texas had six turnovers against Kansas State, forced by the Kansas State aggressive defense. Oklahoma's defense is not the same as Kansas State, so I like my not-so-fast special. I like Texas to outscore Oklahoma. You get kind of surprised in there. Right? Yeah, I did. I'm not, sh waiting for another one. I'm not sure it's the running game. I think you're going to see more passes thrown in this game than any Texas-Oklahoma game ever. Hmm. Earl Campbell, Billy Sims, Joe Washington. Ricky, where have you gone? <laughs> you throw, throw the ball. Coming up, we're going to...